What's up YouTube? Uh, I'm going to make a knife collection video for 2016. Uh, this is going to be an update since my previous collection video. I have the same uh, HPRC case as last time with the, uh, the 2700 model. You can see I added a couple stickers to it just to give it a little uh, extra character and it kind of shows what's in the case. Just uh, some stickers from a couple different dealers and makers and whatever. Um, you can see there's a lot of blank spaces. Uh, that's because I got I got another case for my slip joints, my Swiss Army knives, and my friction folders. I'll show uh, that case and, as well as my fixed blades in a different video. All right, so we'll just jump right into it. Same as last time, uh, the Spyderco Tenacious. Great knife, uh, Spyderco's budget line, HCR 13 MOV blade steel, made in China. Stainless steel liners, G10 scales. This one's obviously modified by me. Uh, not the best job, but I'm gonna keep this knife forever so it doesn't really matter. A good knife overall, feels great in the hand, very affordable. Everyone knows about the Tenacious. There's that one. Then we have the Spyderco Sage. Fantastic EDC blade. Um, CPM S30V, made in Taiwan, full flat ground blade, that, that Spyderco uh, leaf shape, carbon fiber laminate scales, uh, wire clip, kind of a love-hate thing, but I actually, I do love the wire clip, it functions great, uh, this one's black, so it's not really conspicuous in the pocket, you know, you wouldn't be able to tell that this is a knife, and that's what I like about it. That's the Sage One. Excellent, excellent knife. Then we have the Spyderco Delica Damascus. Kind of same, uh, same overall shape, obviously, as your standard Delica. Same VG10 core as you get in a standard Delica. You can see the center line there. And then we're just uh, Damascus layers around that. Beautiful blade. Love the way that looks. Then you have your titanium frame. I have a low riding aftermarket uh, pocket clip on here. I'll leave a link in the description where I get those. Mostly on eBay. But that's the uh, Delica Damascus. I love this blade. People say it's too pretty to use. Uh, may be the case, but price wise, it's really not that much more expensive than a paramilitary too. Uh, Gail Bradley, they just recently released uh, Gail Bradley 2, slightly more ergonomic uh, handle, blade is pretty much the same I believe, uh, same steel they use I think, uh, CPM M4, great uh, great steel, tool steel, you just have to keep an eye on it because of the high carbon content, you can see there's some kind of, there's some spotting on that blade, but that's alright, nice uh, standard kind of hourglass pocket clip. <clears throat> thick stainless steel liners on this one very smooth <laughs> as you can see it nearly guillotined my fingers there but excellent knife I really do enjoy the Gale Bradley and we have the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 crowd favorite G10 scales CPM S30V blade steel made in USA oh the um the Delica is made in Japan and the Gail Bradley in Taichung, Taiwan. Uh, but I don't have to <clears throat> say anything about the paramilitary too. Like I said, it's a favorite of a lot of people. Have a low riding clip on there. Just an excellent knife. Full, fat, full flat ground blade. Very ergonomic in either grip. It's, it's great. It's a great EDC blade. And it's definitely one of my favorites. That's the paramilitary two. Have the Spider Co. Southerd. <clears throat> Have a few different versions of this knife now. Uh, this is the original with the beige or tan G10 scales and the, and the over travel stop. Again, made in Taiwan. CTS 204P steel on this one. Excellent steel. Excellent knife overall. Spider Co.'s first flipper. Frame lock. Flips very well, very smooth, 
Great knife. Benchmade mini onslaught. Bob Lum design. Like I said in the previous video, uh, I love this knife. I just hate the pocket clip. Uh, 154 cm blade steel on this one. I believe flat ground. Nice opening hole. Smooth G10 scales. Very comfortable. Um, nice and thin blade. Great knife overall. I just wish I could find a new pocket clip. Mini onslaught. Made in USA. Another crowd favorite. Benchmade 940. Excellent knife. One of my favorites as well. Very thin, very lightweight. See that beautiful anodizing on the backspacer. Another low riding clip. I just heat colored it. Uh, this is titanium. Heat colored it to kind of match most of the jeans I would wear. Very smooth, of course, with the axis lock. This one is in S30V, Osborne Design. I love this knife. Nice utilitarian blade shape. Definitely a favorite. That's the 940 by Benchmade. And of course, you know all Benchmades are made in the USA, or at least most of them, I think. Uh, this is the first uh, kind of new edition since uh, my last collection video. This is the 484-1 uh, Nakamura. This is kind of the dressed up version with your carbon fiber scales, your anodized blue pivot collar on either side, and your S90V blade steel with that nice stone wash on it. Very cool knife. Uh, maybe not for everyone. Uh, it's kind of small and there's a finger groove for each finger so if you have larger hands it may not work for you but it's it's okay for me I have medium uh, small to medium hands very smooth again axis lock very comfortable uh, kind of a maybe not the it's maybe not a looker but I like it that's the Nakamura 484 Right, we have the Boker Grip Lock. Very cool knife, Grant and Gavin Hawk uh, design and mechanism made in Taiwan, AUS 8 steel, made by Boker. Boker's been doing a lot of really cool collaborations over the past year. And this is one of them. I think uh, everything frame wise and scale is made out of aluminum. You can see that how that mechanism works. I did a video on this one if you want to go check it out. It kind of springs open in either direction once it gets past a halfway point. Flipper, very cool. That's the grip lock. Boker Monero. Boker Plus Monero. Titanium frame lock. Very uh, beefy, beefy blade. Large knife. Very cool texture on that frame. I tried to heat color the um, the backspacer there and the thumb stud or thumb disc. Very crazy looking blade on there. You can kind of see the arrow in the uh, flats. A signature of Monero designs. Recurve kind of modified Tanto. Very cool looking blade, but uh. Doesn't really get much carry time to be honest. That's the Monero. Buck 110. Everyone should have one of these in their collection. Uh, it's a classic. Made in USA. Kind of the ultimate beater knife. It's a 420 high carbon steel with your brass bolsters, wooden scales. Just a classic and uh, really timeless design. As you can tell, many people have copied this design. That's the Buck 110. Excellent knife. Uh, Buck Vantage Pro. Another great knife by Buck. This is just an early example, so it may be not the best uh, quality or fit finish. But the newer models definitely have stepped it up from what I've seen.
S30V blade steel with the ball seat treat. Nice hollow grind. Flipper, and it kind of has that strider opening hole. Smooth G G10 scales. You got the Buck Anvil logo there. Low riding clip. I prefer deep carry, so I really do like that clip, and it is reversible. That's the Vantage Pro. Here we have the uh, Buck Marksman. Another flipper, very similar looking to the uh, the Vantage series. This is another Grant and, Ga Grant and Gavin Hawk collaboration, as it says right there. Again with the Boss Heat Treat, but this one's in 154 cm. I think they call us the SLS, uh, not for Mercedes, but uh, for a uh, strong lock system. It's basically a strap lock, but it is very strong. This knife is very solid. Uh, is running on bearings, and it is a flipper. Very cool. And once you once you get used to it, it is very fun to play with. Nice aluminum frame. They recently, uh, I think at SHOT Show, they debuted a Tonto version with kind of a black washed or acid stone wash finish and a different milling pattern in the frame. Uh, very tempting, you know. <laughs> I want to get one of those, but we'll see. But that's the Marksman, very cool, very cool knife, as I fail to close it every time. <laughs> Here we have the Cold Steel Mini AK-47. Another very cool little knife. This one is the mini, so it's very small, but definitely very useful. I just uh, stripped the coating off the blade, literally using another knife to kind of scratch it off, because this was the one of the older ones with the AUS-8 steel and kind of the paint coating, not really like the DLC that they're doing now. But very cool knife, of course, triad lock, so very strong. That's the mini AK-47. Nice, cool little blade and tough. Here's the Karshal Blur, Tonto version in BDZ1 steel, nice stone wash, kind of have that rubberized grip inserts, Speed Safe USA, this one is de-assisted, very smooth, don't really like assisted knives, and this one has a kind of functioning detent, so that's no problem, Ken Onion design. Those nice angled thumb studs that the blur is famous for. Great knife. Made in USA, I think, uh, Sandvik steel on this one. <clears throat> Kershaw Ram. I've said before how much I really like this knife. I wish they were to, uh, you know, make another run of these. But they are making um, another crush on a uh, knife with the hawk lock I think it's called the induction is what they're calling it but it's made in China it has HCR 13 MOV blade steel uh, I'm not a steel snob or anything but I would just prefer to have it uh, you know made in the USA like this one is uh, this one's actually a blem as you can see from the X's uh, but there's nothing mechanically wrong with this knife I think there was just a couple of scuffs on the scale and of course you can see my dried thumb skin there which is gross but that's the RAM, another Grant Gavin Hawk uh, mechanism, you can see there, and their design. Fantastic knife, very fun to play with. That's the RAM. Here's the uh, Zero Tolerance 550, I think the first uh, Hindra Design ZT. Um, you can see I have a Punisher kind of themed scale on there. I'll leave a link in the description of who makes those. S35 VN blade steel, I believe this is the generation 2, second generation of these, where the relief cut is on the outside and uh, a few other subtle differences, maybe the pocket clip I think too. Have the uh, bullet lock bar stabilizer on there, nice uh, subtle stone wash on the blade, very beefy knife, very uh, heavy duty, titanium frame lock. Very cool knife. And we have the ZT801. Still have this one. Extremely smooth. 
Rexford Design LMAX deal on this one? Yes. And of course, all ZTs are made in USA. Just look, look at the action on that, it's fantastic. Not much to be said about this one. A lot of people have it, a lot of people love it. 801 by ZT. And we have the ZT0562. Uh, another one of my favorites, carbon fiber scale. This is the CF version, basically with the carbon fiber scale and the CTS204P steel. Hinderer slicer grind on there. Nice stone washed uh, titanium frame. You can see the washers there for the KVT bowl bearing system. Uh, another lock bar, you know, bullet lock bar stabilizer. Nice little riding clip. Very cool. Another knife that just flips <laughs> effortlessly. Very smooth. Very ergonomic, very comfortable to hold in the hand. Just a great knife overall, design wise. Excellent knife, one of my favorites. This is the uh, 0562 CF. Come around over here. Uh, CRKT uh, Get Shit Done, or GSD. This one's de designed by Leon Ma. Very good design. Kind of uh, handle heavy, because it's a stainless steel frame lock. I know we would like to see that in titanium, but that's not what we have. Uh, interesting pocket clip. Uh, retains pretty pretty good in the pocket, but it could be better. It's a milled clip, and it doesn't really touch the frame. Nice thin uh, thin frame, but it is stainless steel, so it's heavy. Uh, AUS8 steel on this one, made in Taiwan. You can see the IKBS logo. So it's an affordable knife running on IKBS. Leong Ma design, extremely smooth. Pretty good value. You can see the logo there. Nice stone wash on the frame. Nice thin, very, very good slicing blade. That's the GSD. Emerson Horseman. These are kind of my only tactical or I guess self-defense blades in my collection. I really just carry knives for, you know, daily uh, cutting tasks. We have a 154 cm blade made in USA. Got the bullet thumb disc on there. Giving a little bit of extra flavor. Nice uh, G10 scales. Uh, titanium liner and one stainless steel. I forget which one. This is uh, 2013. I believe they started with the standoffs and got rid of the backspacers. I kind of prefer that. Flow through design. Easier to wash out, maybe with a compressor or what have you. That's the Horseman, also known as the Mini CQC8. Very cool knife. My only other Emerson, Mini CQC15. This one has a uh, peak gray thumb disc. It's the double rifle knurling. Very cool knife. Again, with that two tone finish, kind of the stone wash and then the satin grinds. Nice recurve tanto on this one. Same G10. Uh, same materials really, 154 cm, but recently uh, Emerson is kind of switching it up. He's using, uh, I believe, S35 VN on a couple models. Pretty sure he put bearings in, them, in a couple of them too, and he's coming out with flippers, so he's kind of keeping up with the times. But anyway, this is the Mini CQC 15. Awesome design. Here we have the uh, DPX Hess 2.0. This is kind of a sentimental favorite. This is the first knife that my girlfriend bought me. Uh, I love it. It's a great knife. It kind of has that bottle opener, which also acts as a wave when it's coming out of the pocket. It works okay as a bottle opener. Um, titanium frame lock. This one has lock rock. But again, this is an early example. Uh, I haven't had a uh, more recent you know, example in front of me to compare, but I still love this knife regardless. It's a great knife overall, and it's not going to fail on you. 
G10 scale, uh, kind of in the Ranger OD green. DPX logo there. And it's cool that it comes with a pivot tool with, uh, I think there's a seatbelt kind of cutter in there. And then there's a replacement for the glass breaker where if you don't want a glass breaker, you just have an uh, end cap screw there. Deep carry clip, which I like, but it is kind of big and shiny. But that's okay. And then you have your roto block too, that line steel is uh, famous for. That's the uh, DPX HES 2.0. Great knife. Speaking of line steel, we have the SR2A, the aluminum kind of one piece frame lock. Very cool, very quality uh, machining. You have the uh, lock bar insert there. Again, your roto block. Made in Italy. Sleipner steel on this one. Oh, I think the uh, DPX has D2, and it's also made in Italy. Beautiful blade there, very uh, very broad blade, kind of thick for how small the knife is. Uh, this is the SR2A, so it's the smaller version, but fits my hands really well. Good for an EDC knife. You have your low riding clip, and again, your kind of glass breaker tail cap there. Nice lock up, very smooth. Great knife, nice vibrant red color too, I like that. Same as the case actually. Here we have the Line Steel TRE or 3 Rapid Exchange. Nice anodized backspacer and pocket clip. It's a milled clip but this actually works very well. I like this clip a lot. And again it kind of matches most of the uh, jeans that I wear. You got the lock bar insert there you see. You see that symbol. Uh, signifies that there is uh, bearings on here. Uh, flip's okay, the detent could be stronger, that's a complaint a lot of people had, um, and I agree. It's uh, good for the thumb stud though, thumb stud deployment. The reason why it's called the three rapid exchange is because it has three methods of deployment, the flipper, the thumb stud, and then of course your two hand opening. That kind of dip in the blade there. This one's an M390, kind of a steel that's uh, not easy to get a hand, uh, hold of these days. So pretty cool. This is the TRE by Line Steel. Great machining, great looking, great EDC size. This is the Hogue EX-01. Everyone knows how I feel about this knife. I feel like it's underrated. It's a fantastic blade. Nice aluminum uh, frame. Very durable button lock. Very smooth, very solid. Beautiful Tonto blade with that harpoon. Nice subtle kind of cloudy stone wash. I like the look of that 154 cm blade steel designed by Alan Olishowitz, as most Hogue knives are, if not all. Wasn't a fan of the pocket clip when I first got it, but it has grown on me since then. It works well, kind of looks like a spoon or something. This is the green aluminum version, comes in various blade shapes and uh, handle uh, options. but. This is the one I have and I like it very much. Of course you have your, you know, secondary safety there. Hogue EXO2. Once again designed by Alan Alishowitz. This is a flipper liner lock model. You can see the action is fantastic. This is a coated blade. I'm not sure if it's DLC or whatnot. Made in USA as well as that one. 154 cm blade again. Also has that secondary uh, safety feature, which I, don't, which I don't think is really necessary, but that's besides the point. You can see how tight the fit is on this knife. I mean, it just clears that backspacer. Very cool. It's not um, metal, or I believe it's some kind of uh, polymer or something like that, but it's still very durable. I like the pocket clip on this one. Kind of sitting on two uh, pillars, or it looks like standoffs, but it works very well. I like that a lot. Multi-layer G10, very cool knife. That's the EX02. Quartermaster QTR6. 
very uh, heavy knife. It's a stainless steel frame lock, and it's definitely not a thin frame. You can see the uh, Q for the Quartermaster logo there. 208 out of 300. They make runs of 300, Quartermaster does, but most of their models, I believe. Flips okay. You have your, I was going to say dual, but I guess it's quadruple thumb studs there. The uh, reason why they put four, I believe it's just uh, for design aesthetics, but they are functional, I guess. Nice, thick, beefy blade. That's the QTR6. Clips okay. Clips, clip works fine. But like I said, very heavy knife. Here's the Quartermaster QSE10, I believe. Or the Biff Tannen. This is the uh, stonewashed uh, satin blade variety. Uh, this one, it flips okay. Uh, it's kind of a break-in period, I guess. Again, this is another knife where the D10 can be stronger. But if you preload it a little bit, put some pressure behind the uh, the flip, it'll, it'll flip out for you. Warncliffe uh, blade here, compound ground. Very interesting design aspects. You can see kind of these lines all throughout the knife. Kind of a stepped design here to get access to the uh, I guess you can call those thumb holes, but they're very, very hard to open the knife with the position and the size of them. But very cool knife overall. Good pocket clip. Interesting design all around. You can see 192 out of 300 there. Doesn't look like it would be comfortable with all the angular, you know, curves to it, but uh, it's not that bad actually. It's actually pretty comfortable. That's the QSE-10, or the Biff Tannen. Here's the Quartermaster QSE-5, I think, XL. Uh, this is the Mr. Roper, but this is a collaboration with King's Arsenal. So you can see the Cryptek pattern over there, and the carbon fiber show scale. And on the blade it says King's Roper. Very cool design. I'm not sure if the original was a collaboration with uh, Warren Thomas or not. I think there's controversy surrounding that, but for all intents and purposes, we will say it is a Warren Thomas collaboration, as well as a King's Arsenal and a collaboration with Quartermaster. Extremely smooth, this knife it nearly guillotines your finger every time. The pivot isn't loose, it's just very, very smooth. Running on bearings, of course. Pretty lightweight for the size of it. It's not, it's not a small knife by any means. But it's very comfortable, very ergonomic, uh, very cool with that uh, Cryptek pattern on the titanium stainless steel pocket clip. Works very well. Uh, this is 20 out of 300. Very cool. And again, all, all Quartermasters are made in the USA, which is always good. So smooth. Great knife. This one was a complete impulse buy. After missing out missing out on the QTR-10, the first General Lee with the um, collaboration with G&G Hawk. And I saw this one available, I had to get it, just had to get it. Same uh, external toggle mechanism you get on the Kershaw ET and the first General Lee. It works just like that. <laughs> you can see, I'll kind of do it in slow motion here. Very unique mechanism. And uh, when it is I don't want to call it locked, but when it's in the open position, it's kind of it's very solid. You know, it's not it shouldn't close on you with uh, simple cutting tasks or you know everyday use. You see, Quartermaster made in the USA, very thick frame with all the layers that it has to have due to the nature of the design. Very low riding pocket clip. Looks like that screw is coming loose now that I think of it. I'll have to fix that after this, but I can just play. This is another knife I can play with all day, much like most uh, Grand Gavin Hawk designs. Um, it, it takes some getting used to to flip it open and to close it one handed, but it can be done. Very cool knife. That's the Quartermaster QTR 11 with the Tanto blade shape. It also has kind of like a modified Warncliffe blade. That's the QTR 12. Here we have a Protec TR3 manual integrity folder. 
titanium frame lock, uh, made in USA, S35 VN blade steel, kind of a two-tone finish on that blade. Superb quality, fit and finish, and tolerances on this knife. Excellent knife, very comfortable, simplistic design, but I like this knife a lot actually. Very usable uh, blade shape. Very great knife overall. Like I said, excellent, excellent quality. Protec really does know how to make a frame lock. I don't know why they don't do it more often. They're more with the uh, automatics or whatnot, but. This is a great knife. Good pocket clip as well. Very simple design. That's the TR3. John Greco Falcon Folder. Interesting knife. Uh, both the blade and frame are made out of carbon steel. So you will get some spotting and uh, pitting if you don't uh, keep an eye on it. <clears throat> Again, nice drop point blade, very thin frame and very thick blade. You can see on the back there, very thickness all the way up to the tip. Very thickness, is that English? Um, again, simplistic design, cool kind of uh, hex uh, female ends, I believe that is. You can see the detent holes exposed because the, th the frame is so thin. You have the uh, Greco stamp on the back here, John Greco. Cool knife overall. Doesn't come with a pocket clip, so I have an, a City Dweller lanyard on here. It looks like a pen when it's clipped in your pocket. Very cool. And so that one. And we have the uh, Beretta Avenger 2. This is a another Warren Thomas collaboration, as you can probably tell just by looking at it. Very cool knife. It's got the carbon fiber laminate blade or just two-tone blade. The metal portion of it is um, VG10. Made in Japan, the knife is. Liner lock. This is something that Warren Thomas does with a lot of his customs. Very interesting to look at and uh, very interesting knives and actually make for very lightweight knives being how most of the knife is uh, carbon fiber. And very functional pocket clip. This one doesn't get too much carry time. Uh, I guess it's somewhat collectible, but it's just, it's just so cool. <laughs> All right, here we have the uh, Fodale Knives Orion. You notice the bottom row is kind of more of higher end stuff, and starting to get into mid text and custom world. This one's anodized green, with the nice stone wash on the frame there. Uh, this one's made by Cody Fodale. This was his first uh, folding design, so it's really impressive to see how well it came out being his first one. I'm actually on his pre-order for his second folder. Um, I'll leave links in the description, um, but very cool what he's doing over there. Uh, he calls this his comet effect with these kind of stripes or, you know, carvings or whatever you want to call it on the frame. Very cool clip, milled clip, but works very well. Well done. Nicely centered. See the Fodale Knives logo on the blade there. Heavily acid stone washed. Very uh, kind of stabby blade shape. S35 VN blade steel. Nice uh, lock up there. Clips very well. It has a ceramic detent and a stainless steel bearings. That's the Fodale Knives Orion. Very nice EDC size, very good knife overall. <clears throat> Here we have the Browse Blades Mini Division Flipper. Uh, G10 scales, D2 blade steel, as with all brass blades. Uh, he numbers all, all of his models, I think. 955 out of 1000. Nice low riding clip, I actually really enjoy that. Um, the Orion is made in the USA, I believe I mentioned, and, and I told you the blade steel, yeah. Again, uh, clip I love, it is reversible with this kind of lanyard loop here. You just unscrew the, uh, the last uh, standoff screw, slide them out, and then slide it back in, depending on which you prefer. 
nice thick liner lock. Flips very well, very comfortable in the hand. Good knife. That's the Brass Blades Mini Division. Jimping in all the right places. Here we have the Eric Elson um, TAC 1, I believe this is called. Eric Elson doesn't make knives anymore. So I was glad to pick this one up while I still could. Titanium frame lock. You can see the nice uh, heat colored standoffs here. There's kind of a cutout there for your, your finger when you're flipping it. You got the Elson logo there. S30V blade steel on this one. Very nice uh, kind of brushed finish on the blade there. Nice uh, kind of modified uh, sheep's foot or Warncliffe blade. Comfortable in the hand. Nice lock up. Eric Allison, of course, based out of Canada. Very cool knife. ADV Butcher. Beast of a knife. Excellent uh, flipper. Maybe not the most practical, but it is a cool knife. Badass. Um, ADV Butcher 2014. You can see it has the lock bar insert there. The um, lock bar stabilizer. Nice beefy geared back spacer. Really like this clip. Again, kind of on those pillars. And then a basic spring clip on top of that. Pretty early lock up. Very smooth. Well, very heavy blade. So it just has to basically fall on its own weight. Uh, I believe there's roller bearings uh, in the pivot. Just a beefy knife. Big knife. Probably one of the largest in my collection. Very nice anodizing on the titanium frame. You can see the colors change as the, um, you know, in the milling portions and the flats. Very cool. And then, of course, the polished kind of rings in there. That's the butcher. <clears throat> Strider SNG Lego in the Ranger Green. I love this knife. Fantastic blade. Strider, of course, one of the biggest names uh, in the knife world. Got the tiger striped three quarter grind blade there. This one's in CPM. Focus. <clears throat> S30V. Strider logo. I have a peak gray lock bar stabilizer in there. Beautiful anodizing on that. Still, uh, lock up's right where I would like it to be. Very comfortable to hold. Very iconic design, uh, Strider is. Or the SNG. Flame Titanium looks gorgeous. Love that knife. That's the SNG Lego. <clears throat> and you have the uh, Strider SNG CC or Concealed Carry with the. Um, Cascati carbon fiber scales or scale and backspacer. Very cool knife. Again, lock up right where you want it to be. Very smooth. This is the stone washed uh, flat ground version in uh, CPM 154. Made in USA. Of course, very comfortable to hold. CC version. <clears throat> Nicely contoured. I got a low riding titanium pocket clip on there. I like this knife a lot. And another one of my favorite knives. Got it this past year. Ferrum Forge Mordax. Fantastic blade. Um, you can see right away you have that satin flat and that kind of acid stone washed frame. I'm a uh, bevels, I'm sorry. And uh, also a uh, stone washed frame. Kind of have that hex pattern milled into there. Nice blue anodized pivot and uh, standoffs. Very vibrant, very rich color. And you got the blue. Give me a second. 
Come on. That's my dog. And you got the blue uh, pocket clip here. Please stop licking my arm. <laughs> and, uh, nice early lockup on this one. Really, dog? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, flips well, nice design. Got the forward finger choil. Definitely one of my favorite blades. Let's look at the action on that. You got the whole back rolling detent on there. Baron Forge logo. Uh, just a great knife overall. Can you get out of here? <clears throat> great knife. Baron Forge Mordax. Definitely recommend this to anyone. Very smooth. You got the Chris Reeve Large Subenza 21. Once again, I still the quintessential folding knife, titanium frame lock. You have the micarta inlays or onlays, making it a little bit thicker, a little bit more comfortable. S35 VM blade steel made in USA. So is the Fair and Forge, by the way, based out of California, I think they are. Nice uh, lanyard. And paracord, perfect tolerances, perfect quality. Great knife. Another one of my favorites is the Sabenza. <clears throat> Same as last time, you have the Hinder XM18 Warncliffe. Still have this one, still like it. Uh, very, very comfortable, ergonomic handle, titanium frame. This is the Battleship Gray uh, scale on here. S35 VN blade steel once again. Of course you have that forward finger, finger, finger choil. I wish I could speak. Awesome knife. Everyone loves a hinder, right? Flip's okay. I heard he's getting better with his uh, you know, flipping action in the later models. Great, great knife. <clears throat> and here is my most expensive knife to date. This is the Will Moon Mark VIII. <clears throat> it has, has that taper that Will Moon is famous for. Very cool. Nice flame titanium frame on here. It's a frame lock. You have a G10 pocket clip, which actually works very well. Nice kind of rough finish on the spine of the blade. I'll show you that when I open it here. Great action, nice uh, Tonto Harpoon blade shape. Very cool, very attractive in my opinion. Very comfortable. Nice uh, cutouts for your, your frame lock. Nicely centered, great action. You got the, you know, relief cutout for your, your your uh, finger when you're flipping it. I'll show you that kind of rough finish on the spine there. I don't know if you, there we go. Very cool. One Moon Mark Eight. It's an awesome knife. Definitely recommend uh, his knives to anybody. Great quality, great customer service. Here we just have a Leatherman uh, Wave Multi-Tool, just a standard one. Just have that sitting in there, because why not? All right, guys, that is uh, the majority of my knife collection. I'll, again, I'll make a part two with my um, you know, traditional knives, my other case, and my fixed blades. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.